What's the real deal with Elrond? Hi guys and welcome to the Coin Bureau. My name is Guy and in this video I'll give you what you need to know about Elrond. But before I get going, you need to know that we're not paid or mandated to do any of these videos. These are nothing but our informed opinions and should be used for educational purposes only. And it goes without saying, I'm not your financial advisor and what follows is not investment advice. Oh, and just one more thing. If this is your first time with the Bureau, then you may want to tap that subscribe button to get our latest daily coin reviews. Anyways, let's get back to Elrond. Elrond is a project that is focusing on scaling, interoperability and throughput. The team wants to develop a decentralized network with better performance than their centralized brethren. This is quite an ambitious goal given the difficulty that other blockchains have encountered when it comes to scaling and general transaction throughput. So how exactly is Elrond going to buck the trend and provide a viable alternative? In order to better understand it, we have to take a look into their network architecture. Elrond makes use of the well-known technique of blockchain sharding. Now sharding is essentially the process whereby data is broken up into small pieces and distributed evenly across the network. Sharding can drastically increase the throughput on a decentralized blockchain as well as help with scaling. I won't go into the exact mechanics of sharding here, but if you wanted more information, we have covered it extensively in a post that I've linked to below. Anyways, Elrond has implemented a unique approach to this sharding. They use adaptive state sharding, which has long been used as a database optimization technique, but never in a public blockchain. There are a number of benefits that come from Elrond's approach, and these include, irrespective of the number of shards on the network, it won't impact availability. Determining shard destination is easier, and it's highly adaptable, meaning that it can adjust to increase demand while remaining balanced at the same time. Now, this is all very impressive stuff. In order to maintain consensus on the Elrond network, the developers have implemented another unique twist. They use a secure proof-of-stake consensus algorithm which was developed to improve on traditional proof-of-stake mechanisms. Essentially, as a more sophisticated version of proof-of-stake, it aims to ensure distribution of shards is fair and it is a compromise between increased energy, computational demands and security. I won't go into the exact mechanics of this mechanism here, but you can always check out our complete Elrond review linked to below for more information. Now finally, Elrond is also focused on providing cross-chain interoperability. This is all through their virtual machine. This will support smart contracts written in Solidity, allowing users to create secure transactions between Elrond, Ethereum and other ERC20 tokens without the need for an exchange. Moving on though, Another central component of Elrond is their ERD utility token. This was issued on the Binance chain as a BEP2 token. These will power the Elrond network and will be used for transaction fees, staking, DAP deployment, smart contract execution and validator rewards, so a bunch of internal processes. ERD tokens were initially sold in a Binance IEO, that's initial exchange offering. This took place in July of 2019, and the team sold 25% of their total supply of 20 billion tokens. This saw the project rake in about three and a quarter million dollars. After the IEO, ERD tokens were released on the open market as a significant premium to the initial sale price. They have, however, trended down over the past couple of months, to still a positive return for those who bought during the IEO. Let's take a closer look at those behind the project now, shall we? Elrond is fortunate in that it has a team that features professionals with both technical and entrepreneurial backgrounds. For example, the CEO began his blockchain experience as part of the NEM core team for one and a half years. The CIO is an engineer with eight years of experience and the COO is a successful entrepreneur who has over 15 years of experience investing in the technology sphere. The broader team is comprised of 18 members who have backgrounds in a range of disciplines. This team has been relatively active in development, something that you can easily verify in their GitHub commit activity. So how does the market situation look for the tokens? Well, unsurprisingly, the bulk of the volume of ERD trading is taking place on Binance. In fact, there is only one other exchange that lists ERD and that is Dcoin, and that has only 8% of the total volume. This could pose a real risk to the liquidity of ERD tokens. If there was ever a situation in which trading ceased on Binance, then the liquidity could drop off a cliff. Having said that, liquidity on the order books within Binance is really high. 
This means that you're unlikely to have much trouble executing your orders on the exchange. In terms of storage, you can use any of the BEP2 compatible wallets, including the Ledger hardware wallet. The Elrond team has released a wallet on the testnet and plans on releasing the production wallet later this year. So, to sum everything up, here's my take on Elrond. It has some strong technology that could no doubt help propel awareness and adoption of the blockchain. Their approach to sharding and consensus is already having positive results. A recent testnet case saw 12,000 transactions per second with just five shards in use. That's pretty damn impressive. The project also has a strong team that has been active in development and is moving towards a possible mainnet launch in Q4 of 2019. Now, having said all of this, there are still challenges ahead. Firstly, Elrond is not alone in its sharding-based approach, and there are now a plethora of similar projects such as Harmony, Fusion, Silica, etc. Some of these are much more advanced stages than Elrond. Also, I'd like to see more exchange support for the ERD token. This can help spread the liquidity and reduce reliance on only one exchange. It can also spread adoption of the token, so it kills two birds with one stone. So, that's what I think of Elrond. But tell me, what do you think of the project? Are there any other blockchains that you're backing? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if my overview was helpful, then please do hit up that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Much more coverage will be coming your way.